seven of the most jaw-dropping sex scandals from ancient Rome. Oh, yes please. Turns out, relationships in the past were just as messed up as they are today, just with different tools of destruction. And if you think modern tabloids are juicy, wait until you hear about the scandalous shenanigans that went down in the Roman Republic and Empire. But beware, our sources may not always be trustworthy. The Historia Augusta was basically a mix of serious history and gossip journal, but hey, even the biggest lies can contain a nugget of truth. So, without further ado, let's dive into some of the most outrageous stories of ancient Rome's obsession with sex. And sorry, Caligula, you don't make the cut. We've got plenty of lesser-known tales that could give even the most debauched emperor a run for their money. From public brothels to graffiti in Pompeii, Roman society was definitely not shy about their sexual desires. So, let's raise a glass to the playful poetry of Catullus, the cheeky storytelling of Ovid, and the prude edicts of Augustus. But most importantly, let's get scandalous. The Bacchanalia Festival turns into a huge orgy. Picture this, the ultimate wine-fueled party, complete with dancing, music, and a whole lot of sex. That's right, we're talking about the Bacchanalia Festival, a Roman celebration dedicated to Bacchus, the god of wine, fertility, and parties. But what started as a religious observance to honor the gods quickly turned into a wild, debaucherous event where participants engaged in group orgies and indulged in excessive drinking. As you can imagine, this kind of partying caught the attention of some politicians, who suspected that the festival could be a breeding ground for political unrest. In an effort to keep things under control, legislation was passed to limit the number of participants and regulate the activities that could take place. While the bacchanalia continued on, it was no longer the anything goes bash it once was. Epia, the wife of a Roman senator, runs away with a gladiator. Let's talk about Epia, the ultimate rebel wife of ancient Rome. She didn't run off with just any man. Oh no, she ran off with a gladiator, the ultimate symbol of rough and rugged masculinity. It's like if Kim Kardashian left Kanai for an MMA fighter. And Epia didn't just leave her boring old husband behind, she left her own children too. Apparently, she was so smitten with her gladiator, Sergius, that his scars and battle wounds only made him all the more alluring. It's like the ultimate bad boy fantasy but in ancient Rome. Roman Emperor Elagabalus prostitutes himself. Elagabalus was known for his scandalous behavior during his short reign as Roman Emperor. He was known to have engaged in many sexual relationships, both with women and men, and his behavior was seen as outrageous and unacceptable by many in Roman society. According to ancient historian Cassius Dio, Elagabalus prostituted himself and even made a game of it, asking his guests to bid for the chance to sleep with him. However, as with many stories from ancient history, it is difficult to determine how much of this is true and how much is simply slander or exaggeration. Some modern historians argue that much of the scandalous stories about Elagabalus were created or exaggerated by his political enemies in an attempt to discredit him. What is clear, though, is that Elagabalus was not a successful emperor. He was more interested in indulging in his own pleasures than in governing the empire, and his behavior alienated many of the powerful people around him. He was eventually assassinated by members of the Praetorian Guard, and his reign is now seen as a cautionary tale of the dangers of excess and debauchery in leadership. Cotto divorces his wife so she can marry his friend. Indeed, this is a strange tale of marital arrangements in ancient Rome. It is worth noting, however, that divorces and remarriages were not uncommon in Roman society. Marriages were often viewed as practical arrangements for political or economic gain, rather than based on love or attraction. As such, divorce and remarriage could be seen as a way to adjust these arrangements to better suit changing circumstances. That being said, Cotto's willingness to divorce his wife and then remarry her after she had been married to someone else is certainly unusual, especially given his reputation as a paragon of virtue. It is possible that this story was embellished or exaggerated over time, or that there were extenuating circumstances that are not fully known to us today. Regardless, it offers a glimpse into the complex social and cultural norms of ancient Rome. Emperor Justinian marries a former prostitute. Justinian's reign was marked by significant achievements in law and architecture, such as the codification of Roman law and the construction of the famous Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. However, his rule was not without scandal. One of the most well-known scandals of his reign was the Nika riots, which erupted in 532 AD due to popular dissatisfaction with his government. Additionally, Procopius, who wrote a detailed history of Justinian's reign, also wrote a scandalous secret history in which he portrayed the emperor and his wife Theodora in a very negative light. He accused Justinian of being a ruthless, manipulative tyrant and Theodora of being a former prostitute who had engaged in numerous affairs. The accuracy of these accusations is debated by historians, but they have nevertheless contributed to the image of Justinian 
and Theodora as a scandalous couple in popular culture. The Romans organize a party so that they can steal the neighboring tribe's women. Let's face it, the Romans were experts at weirdness and scandal. They even have a founding story titled The Rape of the Sabine Women. But don't let the name fool you. Historians are still arguing whether there was actual rape involved or if it was just a good old-fashioned kidnapping. When Rome was first established, they had a major problem, a serious shortage of women. So, their solution, throw a party and invite the neighboring tribe, the Sabines. But here's the twist, while the Sabines were enjoying their hors d'oeuvres and wine, the Roman men swooped in grabbed any woman they could find, and ran off into the night. And guess what? The women were totally cool with it and agreed to marry their kidnappers. Talk about Stockholm Syndrome. Naturally, the Sabines were pretty peeved about the whole ordeal and wanted to invade Rome. But the women stepped in and literally put themselves between their Roman husbands and their Sabine kin, stopping the war in its tracks. And thus, the most prestigious Roman families were born. It just goes to show, sometimes love truly does conquer all, even if it starts off as a borderline criminal act. The wife of Emperor Claudius has a contest with a prostitute on who can sleep with more men in one day. When it comes to the Roman emperors, it seems like crazy and scandalous behavior was the norm. But then along came Claudius, sandwiched between two mad rulers, who was actually pretty decent at his job. Unfortunately, his wife Messalina was another story entirely. She was painted as a total sex fiend, sleeping around with anyone and everyone including a powerful senator named Silius. Some even said she was so into sex that she worked part-time at the local brothels. But the wildest rumor of them all was that she once had a competition with a famous prostitute to see who could sleep with the most men in one night, and Messalina won with a grand total of 25. Of course, it's important to remember that ancient Rome had its own set of morals that might not match up with ours today. For example, women were often married off as soon as they started menstruating at the ripe old age of 12 or 13. And while we can't say for sure what really went down with Messalina, it's clear that she made a lot of enemies with her scheming and poisoning. It just goes to show that even thousands of years ago, people had their own agendas and biases when it came to telling the story of what happened. And that's all for today's lesson on some of the weirdest stories from ancient Rome. Who said history is boring? With tales of kidnapping, orgies, and power struggles, it's no wonder Hollywood keeps making movies about this era. So next time you're at a cocktail party and the conversation turns to ancient Rome, you'll be the one with all the juicy tidbits to share. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more history content.